In today's entertainment city, heartbreaking news for Canadian Michael Bublé. His three-year-old son Noah has reportedly been diagnosed with cancer. Now, it's not clear what kind. The family will apparently make a statement later today. In other news, Mariah Carey popped into Toronto for a million-dollar performance. The starlet belted out two songs, including her famous tune, All I Want for Christmas, outside Toronto's Saks Fifth Avenue. We're gonna have a good time of Tanya Kim was there for the highly anticipated show. We are here for the beautiful holiday window unveiling on Queen Street West in Toronto. And these guys are here to see a very special guest performance, Mariah Carey! Waiting out here, like three uh, hours, couple hours, hours now. Yeah, really? yeah. yeah. What is it about Mariah that you love so much? Her music. <laughs> Her music. All I want for Christmas is you. It's the best song ever. I love you, Mariah. Now, Carrie was reportedly paid one million dollars for the roughly five-minute performance. This was also her first time back on stage since her split with fiance James Packer. What I see in your future. It's finally here. Doctor Strange in theaters today. In part five of our interview, the cast chats with how much they loved being a part of the movie. Benedict's incredible as Doctor Strange. Incredible. I think he's phenomenal. I think he, you know, so much pressure to actualize that character and, and it's a beloved character and, you know, will, will you be everybody, what everybody hoped for? And I think he just goes above and beyond that. There's a strength to him. But is he ready? I had a wild time with all of them. It was so much fun as well as hard work. It was really enjoyable. I don't think we left the, the, the studios one day without having a big smile on our faces. It's strange. Maybe. Who am I to judge? Find out if Doctor Strange defies your expectations. It's in theaters. While everybody else is taking life, I'm going to be saving it. That's going to be my way to serve. Also opening today, Hacksaw Ridge. In part two of our interviews, Terry talks to the cast about working with director Mel Gibson. Get in here, my Canadian sister. Oh, <laughs> nice to see you. This is what we're How are you? The love of the world. I'm not too warm without the other one. Oh, the Commonwealth. <laughs> love the Commonwealth. Um, I thought to myself, there's nobody else who could have made this movie other than Mel Gibson. A thousand Fair? percent. Yeah. Absolutely. Why do you think he was so perfect? Not just his talents as a filmmaker, but his person. I think he He's, you know, the greatest filmmaker alive. That apocalypto just blew me away. It's on another level. You know, Braveheart, someone like Mel, of course, it's not a surprise at this point that he's going to breathe life into something, a story that's as powerful as this one. And also his, his, his humor and his, and his humanity really helps with that first bit when you, when you have that amazing love story and, and that, that innocence and, and, that, and that, that fun. And then he juxtaposes that with his amazing ability to, to create hell on screen. I'm going to get you home. One of the things that struck me in a beautiful and really sad way is that watching this movie in 2016, there's a level of cynicism that I think people approach this movie with. Do you agree with that? Well, I think cynicism is part of the 21st century, but I think deep down underneath our experience and like, you know, our cynicism, there's a, there's a, a chord in us that sort of responds to the truth. And I think there's a thread of the truth in this man's story and the simplicity of it mm. that's undeniable. Please, Lord, help me get one more. As always, get your entertainment news here first in the morning and anytime on Twitter at InCity.